KSPW Weather with Chief Meteorologist Lee Solomon. Good evening, everybody. A much cooler day today, of course, all due to the marine layer. We are back into the 70s in Santa Cruz. In fact, all 70s, even up into the Santa Cruz Mountains, of course, where we had 80s and middle 90s yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we also had those middle 80s around Monterey. Today, just 67, but we got sunshine, so at least it was bright outside and it looked pretty. 70 Salinas, 80 in King City and in the Santa Clara Valley, where it was hot yesterday, uh, just middle 80s, so still warm, uh, but again, that's way down from uh, the 101s and 102s we saw around Gilroy and Morgan Hill. So a uh, marine layer took care of business. It really rushed in last night a bit more than we thought. So temperatures dropped a little more inland than we thought as well. 88 in Sacramento today. We had upper 90s in Palm Springs. Got 100 going in Vegas this afternoon and had a 76 in San Diego. Uh, rest of the country. Uh, mostly 70s out west, 70 in Seattle, 76 in Bismarck, 77 in Boise. Other side of the uh, country, mostly middle and upper 80s, low 90s. So I really haven't seen any hints of fall uh, really back east. The, the dog days of summer might be over, but it's still pretty warm. 97 in Dallas today. A line of showers and thunderstorms uh, coming through the heartland there uh, and heading northward. Most of this is just showers and thunderstorms, not the kind of uh, supercells you see. Uh, sometimes in spring and fall, but mostly in spring. These are not spawning any tornadoes, so nothing uh, really severe out of that. Uh, this is all low clouds, so it's all marine inversion there. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, that's when you have cool air on the bottom and warm air on top. Everybody's where they want to be, and uh, the damp stuff is uh, where we live on the planet uh, right at the surface. Uh, never cleared north of San Francisco today, so uh, still dealing with low clouds. Big ridge of high pressure. You can see the clockwise rotation there. Uh, there is a bit of a jet stream going. Of course, that's what uh, drives and uh, uh, kind of uh, get, puts our winter storms uh, where it wants to be, right? So this line here indicates the jet stream and uh, storms will follow uh, the jet stream through. So right now it's all pointed up actually into British Columbia. So nothing in Alaska, if anything, uh, nothing coming even into the Pacific Northwest right now, but that will start to change uh, in the coming days. High pressure will stick with us right into the weekend and we may actually warm up a little bit more, just a little bit though, next couple of days. Then we're watching an area of low pressure actually drop in uh, from Canada. So when it comes down over land, it really doesn't fuel up any showers because it's uh, just coming over uh, dry conditions, uh, not pulling any moisture. But uh, what it will do, though, is cool us down quite a bit. This is Tuesday and uh, middle of next week actually uh, looks quite cool. We may even mix out the uh, marine layer uh, for a couple of days. Uh, light winds tonight will keep them mostly west, but zero to five. Tomorrow afternoon, not a lot of wind. When you see the small arrows, that indicates lighter winds. Uh, when you see those longer arrows come in, which you see quite often, those are the, the heavier gusts of 20 to 25, but five to 10, maybe a gust of 15 tomorrow. Low clouds will be coming back in tonight. We'll figure on a little bit of patchy fog and or some mist and drizzle. Uh, just a little bit at the coast tomorrow. You know, most of the beaches should clear. We may see some lingering low clouds on some of them, but uh, for the most part, we'll be back to sunshine and overnight lows tonight. Mostly low to mid 50s, 51 to 56, and we should be clouding up later tonight. Tomorrow, 65 to 72 for the coast and 76 to 85 for the valleys and the hills with everybody getting back into sunshine in the afternoon. Mid 60s in San Francisco, middle 70s though in Fremont, and then into the south and East Bay over to San Jose, 81. Warmer spots will be right around Gilroy and Morgan Hill, about 85, 75 though for Hollister, and 70 uh, to low 80s between Salinas and King City. Obviously a little warmer south of King City, but not by a whole lot. Uh, some middle and upper 80s possible. 66 in Seaside, 65 in Carmel, 67 in Marina. So uh, back to the 60s for most coastal locations until you get over to Santa Cruz. We'll get them back to 72 and an 80 for Boulder Creek. Your KSBW 8-day forecast uh, taking you into the weekend now. Mostly 60s to low 70s coast side, so uh, nothing warm by the beach. And if anything, even a little cooler early next week as that uh, weak low pressure system drops in for a visit. 70s and 80s go back to just 70s really for the most part next week, but it is September, so yeah. you know, let's get a move on. Yeah. For me, I, let's <laughs> yeah. get move on to the rain. Right. Let's skip it all, you know, just yeah. get into the colder yeah, well, stuff. Yeah, well, we're probably going to go through a little warm stuff before we yeah. get to the rain. Well, I'm a snow lover, so I'm just like, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Let's have an early <laughs> Ready to ski. It's yeah. happened yeah. before in October. Yeah, yeah it has. It has. All right. Yeah. Let's do our weather quiz. 
This one uh, having to do with actually uh, ice, the process that makes older ice cubes shrink in your freezer. Evaporation, sublimation, condensation. I, it's a process of elimination for me. It's, it's not A or C, so it has to be B, right? Sublimation. I don't really That's know That's a scientific that, approach. I don't really know what that means, but I just know it's not the other two. It's when it goes from directly forward. directly from a, ga a gas to a solid or solid, well, solid to, to a solid, gas solid this to time gas, around. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Yep. Evaporation of course yeah. is liquid to a gas. So skips go. that part. There you go. Okay. See? Well we we uh, we got it right. Yeah, we anything <laughs> then it, then it clings to the rest of the food <laughs> in your fridge. Any anything to do with gas. <laughs> you know, very good. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Well. Now, coverage you can count on from the Central Coast's number one rated local news. This is KSBW Action News 8 at 6.30. Top story at 6.30, Commitment 2016 coverage. Last night, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump faced questions about their plans as Commander-in-Chief. Action News reporter Alex Diaz explains they defended their positions and made a lot of claims about opponents, but were they telling the whole truth? Our partners at PolitiFact checked some of the statements made during last night's NBC News Forum. Hillary Clinton says none of the emails on her private server were marked classified. Classified material has a header which says top secret, secret, confidential. None of the emails sent or received by me had such a header. We rated this mostly true because Classified information is supposed to have that header at the top. Sometimes it doesn't have it. It's still classified. It's just not properly marked. Clinton claims Donald Trump wants to privatize the veterans' health care system. I will not let the VA be privatized. And I do think there is an agenda out there supported by my opponent to do just that. PolitiFact rates this mostly false. Trump is in favor of allowing veterans to see a private doctor, but he's not proposing to dismantle the VA. I happened to hear Hillary Clinton say that I was not against the war in Iraq. I was totally against the war in Iraq. Trump keeps repeating this. Independent fact checkers have debunked it. It's false. He did not speak out against the war in Iraq before the war started. I was able to get more votes than anybody ever has gotten in the history of Republican but when you politics. Say in PolitiFact says this claim is mostly true. He did not crack 50 percent. He ran against a very crowded field, so the other candidates together got more votes than Trump did. The candidates will share the stage in just a few weeks for their first debate, September 26. In Washington, Aixa Diaz, KSBW Action News 8. After weeks of trying to get more attention as a presidential candidate, Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson did manage to do that today, but it wasn't what he actually wanted. It was a major misstep. Take a listen. What would you do if you were elected about Aleppo? About? Aleppo. And what is Aleppo? You're kidding. No. Aleppo is in Syria. It's the... Uh, it's the epicenter of the refugee crisis. Okay, got it, got it. Johnson instead argued against military intervention in foreign countries. He also suggested that the U.S. should, quote, join hands with Russia to bring an end to the conflict in Syria. The November 8th election is less than 60 days away. Tonight we have a closer look at where voters stand on the race for California's open U.S. Senate seat. California Attorney General Kamala Harris continues to hold a big lead over Orange County Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez, according to a new poll from Cal Speaks Opinion Research Center at Sac State. 51% of likely voters say they would vote for Harris. Only 19% favored Sanchez. Both Harris and Sanchez are Democrats. It's the first time two members of the same party have faced each other in a statewide runoff since California adopted the top two primary. They are running to replace another Democrat, retiring U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer. Back here on the Central Coast, a man who was convicted in a triple Salinas homicide case back in 1998 is now being removed from death row. Daniel Covarrubias spent the past two decades as a condemned inmate on San Quentin Prison's death row. Sentence was thrown out by the Supreme Court of, the Cal of California. The state based its reversal on problems with jury selection because five jurors were excused based solely on their personal opinions about capital punishment. Covarrubias was convicted by a Monterey County jury of killing a family of three in a Salinas home invasion. 
His two cousins and a nephew were also tried for the crime. Monterey prosecutors will now have to decide if they want to retry the case. There is good news and bad news for the upcoming Dungeness crab season, which opens November 15th. Scientists predict that a big algae bloom that infected crabs with domic acid won't cover the entire coast like it did last year, but the season itself still remains up in the air. Crab fishermen won't receive the green light until a week or so before the season is set to open. Coming up, major upset, Serena Williams taken down at the U.S. Open. What it means for the world's top player. Now, KSPW Sports with Drea Blackwell. Welcome back. Central Coast native Ron Rivera is back on the sidelines, leading his Carolina Panthers in the first game of the NFL regular season. His team, of course, falling one game short of the championship last season. But tonight, there's a chance for some revenge. The first game of 2016 featuring the same teams we saw in last year's Super Bowl. Panthers and Broncos in Mile High Stadium tonight. And we have a bit of a dead heat going on right now. The Panthers and Broncos tied at seven in the second quarter. Looks like Carolina is driving down the field, though. We'll have highlights on Action News at 11. The 49ers do not play until Monday, but they are grabbing headlines today. The team will donate $1 million to Bay Area charities that target social issues. Now, that move was inspired by Colin Kaepernick, who promised to give a million bucks out of his pocket to similar organizations. As for Cap's decision to kneel during the national anthem, that's inspired demonstrations around the league. We're now hearing that the Seattle Seahawks are organizing a sideline gesture involving their whole team. That'll happen before their opening game on Sunday. The team has not said exactly what it will look like, except that it is meant to symbolize unity. Baseball fans, you have the night off. Giants and A's have one day in between series. Very different experience for both teams, though. The Giants, coming off of a heartbreaking walk-off loss in Colorado, their playoff hopes are at stake. The A's are far from the playoffs, but they are enjoying back-to-back -back victories over the Angels. They'll meet the Mariners in Oakland tomorrow. The Giants are flying to Arizona for a series with the Diamondbacks. History will have to wait. Serena Williams upset in the semifinals of the U.S. Open today. The world's former, and I say former, top player taken down by 10th ranked Karolina Pliskova for the first time in three years. Serena Williams is not the number one player in the world after tonight's loss. She is now knocked down to second. It also means that she has to wait for another opportunity to take down Steffi Graf's record and win her 23rd Grand Slam. We'll bring you the highlights from Serena's match a little bit later on. Now to Carmel, Indiana, the other Carmel and the Crooked Stick Golf Club. That's the site of this week's BMW Championship. Very rainy day in Indiana. Everyone taking a little longer to get around the course today. There's your one day leader, Roberto Castro. He sits at seven under. Number one player in the world sitting at 51 today. Jason Day won this tournament last year. He's at one over after the first round. Basketball Hall of Fame just got a whole lot bigger. Shaquille O'Neal and Yao Ming among this year's inductees. There they are receiving their very, very large Hall of Fame jackets. Some of the other honorees include Allen Iverson and Cheryl Swoops. Iverson was not there today. He showed up after the event had already wrapped up, saying that he got tied up with some personal issues. But the big celebration is tomorrow evening. And we'll head to Los Angeles, the LA Galaxy, welcoming back the teams and probably this country's greatest male soccer player ever, Landon Donovan, coming out of retirement to rejoin the team. Galaxy posted this video on Twitter today, showing Donovan putting on his number 26 jersey and then the caption saying simply, he's back. Only took a few days. Tim Tebow is now a professional baseball player. He was signed by the New York Mets earlier this morning. Tebow's not heading to the big city just yet, though. First, he will head to Florida to play in the Mets minor league system. The two-time Heisman Trophy winner has not played competitive baseball since high school. He was cut by the Mets, New York neighbors, the Jets, back in 2012. That's your look at sports. Now we want to answer tonight's sports quiz. We asked, how many Super Bowls have the 49ers played in? The answer is six. The 49ers have won five. They lost one. That was in 2012 against the Baltimore Ravens. All right. Yeah, so those were the days. Wow. Yes, yes. Much better times. <laughs> Thanks, Trey. Thanks, Trey. Coming up on Action News, important information if you drive a Mazda or a Ford, some major recalls.
First, a live look outside, Skycam Aid Salinas. Can add your local conditions, and we'll be right back with more coverage you can count on. Project Economy, Americans borrowing more money than ever, to, ever before to pay for cars. Trouble is, they aren't paying the money back on time. Outstanding car loans in the U.S. now total more than a trillion dollars. Second quarter in a row, the amount passed that mark. Overdue payments also on the rise. 30 and 60 day delinquencies up from a year ago among those with a lower credit score. Victory for Uber. Yesterday, a federal appeals court ruled drivers have to resolve claims individually with Uber. They will not go through a class action lawsuit. The ruling allows less leverage for drivers in a separate lawsuit, accusing Uber of exploiting them by categorizing them as independent contractors and not employees. Inventory in the housing market still pretty tight. Long-term mortgage rates remain at historic lows. In fact, they edged even lower this week. That has sparked a new wave of refinancing. Benchmark rate for a 30-year fixed is at 3.44%, 15-year rate at 2.76. Fewer Americans, though, are applying for unemployment benefits despite a drop in hiring in August. The Labor Department says it's a sign companies are hanging on to current staffers and that job security remains solid for most U.S. workers. In fact, unemployment claims have now come in below 300,000 for 79 straight weeks, the longest streak since 1970. On the Consumer Watch tonight, two big car recalls to tell you about tonight. First, Ford is adding about one and a half million cars, SUVs and vans to a recall for doors that can open while the vehicles are moving. Nationwide recall covers several models, including Ford C-Max and Escape, Ford Focus, Ford Transit Connect and Ford Mustang and Lincoln MKC. Automaker will replace the door latches for free. Also, a recall from Mazda. The automaker says more than 759,000 cars and SUVs have a rear hatch that can fall on people and injure them. Recall covers certain Mazda 3 cars and Mazda 5 vans. Also included are some CX-5 and CX-3 SUVs. Customers will be notified over the next two months about when they can bring their cars in for repairs. Toys R Us has released its annual hot toy list for the holidays, making the List this year, items like Num Nom Num Nom's lip gloss truck and Doc oh, McStuffins yeah. hospital care cart. Doc as well, McStuffins. you probably know about all this stuff, I don't you? I know Doc you? McStuffins, yeah. As well as Star Wars themed toys. It also highlights drones and coding toys. And six of its top 15 toys are exclusive to Toys R Us. Coming up on Action News, animal stories, and Lee's got the On the Road weekend forecast. First, a look at how some local companies ended this day on Wall Street. We'll be right back. NBC primetime lineup tonight. It is a bit jumbled up because of the football game, so we are talking about after the game. 8.30, Whacked Out Sports, and then you've got 9 and 9.30, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. A little bit later than you're, you normally used to seeing it, but they will be on. Dateline NBC at 10, and then KSPW Action News 8 at 11. One click away over the air on your subscription TV service. If you like the $100,000 pyramid, we've got you covered. <laughs> You'll see it at 8. You'll see it at 9. And then at 10... It's a match game, followed by KSPW Action News 8 <laughs> at 11. Coming up on Action News 8 at 11, a big break in two cold cases on the Central Coast. The man arrested, accused of sexually assaulting a developmentally disabled woman and an 8-year-old girl. Plus, forgot the hot dogs or run out of beer. Well, no problem. Amazon teaming up with the 49ers for tailgating deliveries at Levi Stadium. You knew this was coming, right? How it works, we'll show you tonight at 11. All right, on the road forecast, here's Lee. Yeah, let's check it out. Heading out around uh, the California, we'll help first head up to the Bay Area. Saturday, 62 to 72. Sunday, low clouds to start you off. Sunshine in the afternoon, basically 60s uh, over at the beach and 70s 
uh, to low 80s for the East Bay. Redwood Coast, always a little cooler, low 60s to low 70s Saturday with low clouds and then 66 to 76 on Sunday. Again, they'll be seeing some fog up on the Redwood Coast. Heading inland, that's going to be your warmer bet. Central Valley, 91 to 97 on Saturday. Sunday, 86 to 92. Tahoe, looking good this weekend. Still doing summer. Mid-70s to middle 80s on Saturday and 72 to 82 on Sunday. And all sunshine. Yosemite, also looking really nice. Between 70 and 80 degrees on Saturday. Sunday, also between 70 and 80. So very, very pleasant. Southern California, low clouds on the beach. Clearing for afternoon sunshine, low 70s to low 80s, and your hot spot, as it usually is, Palm Springs, 104 to 107 on Saturday. A little cooler on Sunday, just 100 to 103. Taking a look at our weekend, starting off tomorrow, 76 to 85. That'll be your valleys and hills, 60s, low 70s, coast side. We're back in the low clouds for everybody in the morning, sun in the afternoon. We'll basically keep middle 70s to middle 80s going inland and low 60s to about 70 at the coast. Thank you, sir. Finally, animal stories. Tonight, cute babies from the zoo in Atlanta. Twins, panda oh. twins from Loon Loon, who gave birth uh, over the weekend. It's a uh, second pair of twins. Cubs are uh, the sixth and seventh giant pandas born at the Atlanta Zoo. Look, there's oh. the butt. There's the little baby wow. panda Isn't butt. I'm sorry, but they look like salamanders. They oh, yeah, they're much they? better when they grow a little. They say uh, public will see the cubs either in December or maybe January. So adorable. Until then, they'll I'm look a little more like pandas. <laughs> I'm always, I'm, look at how little they are. I know, are. so mm -hmm. tiny. Isn't that crazy? So tiny. They're actually kind of creepy. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> that is our report. They'll we'll grow see you into back tonight. Cute, cuddly things soon enough. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you back tonight for Action News at 11. Till then, have a great night. You take care.